Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Monday, October 23rd. This is our real estate update for Austin, Texas investors uh, for the last week of October 2017. We've got a few topics to go over for you today. Uh, we've kind of mentioned ad nauseum that uh, the market has slowed down. We've seen this across the board. We've also got some supporting documents that it's not just in Austin, it is across the nation. So for those of you landlords out there, we've got a great article for you. Uh, this one is actually out of New York and it is from Housing Wire. The article reads, New York landlords face mounting pressure to lower rents, vacant properties on the rise. Um, tenants are actually getting concessions anywhere between one to 1.5 months of free rent, but it's not uncommon to see up to three months of free rent. So as a landlord, what are you supposed to do? It's, it's not just Austin, it's New York, it's kind of going across the nation because it's the slow season as well as supply is up. Well. Demand was up last few years, right? Prices rose, so go figure. People built more buildings, there's more apartments on the market because that's the way the marketplace works. So this is that part of the equation where you have to look at yourself and say, we knew this was a long-term game, this is for the long haul, so what do we have to do to get through this season? Everything is a season, whether it's renting at an off time, on time, or parts of your life. A lot of things are seasonal, so this is one of those slower seasons, and you'll need to weather the storm to make sure you get the long-term gains. No different than if the market was down and you had your 401k invested in a lot of things and they took a tumble, you would wait it out for the long haul. Same thing with real estate investing. So talk to your property manager. As always, make sure your property is priced right, if not aggressive, and the condition is great so that you can get the curb appeal and get any tenants that do look at it to love it. Uh, then we need to start looking at things like incentives for tenants or shorter term leases. Uh, make sure all the details are, are checked, the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, and your, your property is really looking good for everyone out there so that if you get a showing, you can get that fish on the hook. A couple other things to go over with you. We've got a lot of owners who are constantly contacting us from the outside that are not current clients or that maybe are current clients in a dilemma and they go, well, should I Airbnb? Should I short-term rental my place? And we give our advice, but a lot of people think it's kind of one-sided because it does come from a property management company, but we didn't design our company around what we thought we wanted you to do, we designed it around what we thought was the best solution for the marketplace. And so we need to support that with evidence. So we're a member of some closed forums, some of them are trade groups, some of them are Facebook forums, some of them are worldwide forums for, for landlords and property managers. But I've got an interesting one that I just pulled up from a gentleman named Danny in Orlando. And it says, uh, I recently experimented with managing two Airbnb, Airbnb properties. After three months, I told the owners that they would net more income and more money is a long-term rental. The higher gross income was not enough to overcome the management fees, cleaning, utilities, etc. I know that two properties is not much of a sample size and I realize every market is different, but I'm giving up on this business model for now. Uh, anybody that would know how to make it work, please let me know. I'll be sending those properties to you in Orlando. We found in Austin as well, people call us and want us to manage short-term rentals and not only is legislation always in flux, but it's challenging. You've got midnight turns on the properties. You've got to have a bulk of items that you can replace. Imagine if one fort goes missing or two or three. You don't want to buy an entire set. So when there's a condominium complex that's short-term rental managed, you can generally have a back stock of everything. Sheets, dishes, utilities, uh, excuse me, um, wear, utility wear, uh, Utensils is the word I'm looking for, please excuse me. Um, you've got towels, you've got everything that you could ask for back stocked. Well, that's not the case when you've got one off units. So uh, it, it's a lot harder and financially, we tell people all the time, it's twice the income, twice the expense, twice the headache, why bother? It's all gonna come out even in the long run. That's what this guy's found. Last thing we wanna go over with you is um, some maintenance cost. As you know, Austin, the employment rate is just e extremely low and it's tough to find labor even during the summer. We believe next summer is gonna be even tougher than this year, which has been increasingly difficult. Um, one thing that we found is that even when looking for helpers for the maintenance people that we are connected to, the day labor rate for people that may or may not be legal to work in the U.S. has gone from what used to be $100 to now it's $250 for a day labor rate for someone at Home Depot or Lowe's just to give you manual labor help. Now mind you, these people don't have insurance, they expect transportation to and from, and they want to get lunch. <laughs> so when you work that all together, you're looking at about $300 for the cost of 
just basic labor. That's how much things have gone up over time. So if you see your handyman charging a little bit extra, uh, the maintenance crew costing a little bit more, it has trickled through the economy. A two, three, or four percent unemployment rate really drives prices up, and we're seeing that across the board. So that's a wrap for us today in Austin. If we can help you with anything related to real estate investing, please give us a call 512-994-4323 or see us.